This video is brought to you by ChemPower, the reliable, quick, and scalable EV charging solution for everyone and everywhere. And this video is also brought to you by StarCharge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world. They are also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage with microgrid solutions. Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. You join me in a Volkswagen ID4 with Colton and Alyssa. It's been a long time since we filmed an ID4. Very long time. But the new one's coming. I'm gonna go drive the new 2024 with the new software and screen uh, in like a week. So an ID4 update video coming. I've already driven that car in Europe, but I figured let's see how the US spec is going. So we're gonna try that out. Uh, but a big update for you, Colton. Oh, bless you, Alyssa. <laughs> a, a big update <laughs> is that your 2023 ID4 actually got improved through a software update. Yes. Or at least a software feature, which is plug and charge. And plug and charge is on many electric vehicles. And to me, it was always mind boggling how Volkswagen couldn't get plug and charge set up on the ID4 with the Electrify America, also Volkswagen, charging network. Mm -hmm. Tycon had it for after the first model year, but I think the Mustang Mach E was the first vehicle to support plug and charge in the US on Electrify America. And now your ID4 finally, years after start of production, years after the start of Electrify America, years after ISO 15118-2 certificate exchange made its way to the market, your car supposedly now supports it. We're gonna walk everyone through in this video how Colton set it up and we're gonna try it for the first time. We're hoping for an unexciting result because if we just plug it in and it charges, which should be the bare minimum expectation if I'm honest, then everything is going well. We are on the way to the Loveland Electrify America charging station that we have featured many times on this channel. And Colton, I can tell your battery is cold because we have very limited performance and it's quite chilly outside, but still your car does not have battery preconditioning. None. <laughs> Absolutely none. <laughs> What's up with that? Yeah, I don't know. That's just ID4 things, I guess. Um, the new ID4 should have battery preconditioning, I believe, the 24. Yeah, and proper route planning. Well, I don't know if it's proper route planning. Better. I mean, anything I think is better than, than this. <laughs> this one. It's just miserable. You've yeah. taken this ID4, you know, it came with three years of free Electrify America charging for 30 minutes. We know ID4 owners, many of who, you know, treat that respectfully and don't do anything crazy, but we've also seen ID4s take massive advantage of that. Oh, yeah. um, you don't tend to road trip this car. First of all, you don't road trip that far much anyways, but when you do, you take one of your Teslas, What's been your ID4 quick ownership update? You've had it for a year now? Yep. Uh, yeah, I guess like 14, 15 months now. We bought it November of 22. So, yeah, I mean, things are good. I always tell people the ID4 is a great car, not a great EV. Right. Well, it didn't have plug-in charge. Now it's getting it. Yes. The charging performance is actually not bad, I would say, but you do need a warm battery and uh, no route planning that you should rely on and no battery preconditioning and mm -hmm. pretty sluggish software. It's been a while since I've been in one of these and I, I used to like in my head, everyone hated the software. I always gave, I always didn't mind it actually that much, Sure. but it, you do have to let it boot up after you give it like the first one or two minutes. It's okay. But if you wake this thing up stone cold and then try doing stuff, it's like, I don't know what to do. Yeah, it, anything, it just has like such a lag on it. I mean, we don't really use any of this. I set, you know, charging to 60% uh, here just for winter time. My wife, Jess, that drives this car all the time, like she literally commutes, what, 10 miles maybe? Yeah. So this thing is like, never really needs to get charged all that much in it. We live off a 110 outlet with this thing at home, so it works fine for our situation, but road tripping's been an experience, I would say. I mean, the farthest this car's ever been is Aspen, which is like four and a half miles away. No, four, four and a half, half hours. hours. <laughs> four and a half hours away, and you know, charging was just annoying to say the least, and the whole time, Jess is just like, why did we not take the Tesla? And I'm like, well, I wanted to try this out and just like, you know, see how bad EA actually is. And our experience, we were able to charge 
most of the times, sometimes waiting, but we had chargers down, full stations. I mean, at one point we had some guy working on stall one and parked his car in stall two. So he was taking up like half of the station right there and wouldn't move his car to allow us to charge. And that was the guy working on the charger. Working on the charger with <laughs> another one broken. So there were two working and he was parked in front of him. And I'm like, how is this okay? It's just not. Right, right. So, I mean, certainly uh, Volkswagen is committed to NACS. Uh, with uh, the adapter, you'll you'll receive the adapter, whether or not you'll have to pay for it or you'll get it for free, we're not sure. Ford's uh, already announced that they're going to be giving their customers the adapter at no charge, one per VIN, which I think is a pretty good um, you know situation. Yep. I hope Volkswagen does the same thing because even if you do get free charging on EA, it's still going to be so nice to have the supercharger network. 100%. Yeah, I would way rather just go charge a supercharger. Yeah, even if it costs some money for the few times a year you road trip. Yeah, and you can do in the you know Tesla app or whatever, you can buy down the rate essentially by paying the monthly. Yep. So I've already got that set up. Not that I need it right now, but I'm just like, yeah, I'll just give some more money to Tesla, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have the, uh, the subscription for the European plan because when I'm in Europe, I always have to use the supercharger network because as an American, it's the only way I can activate. But we have a Magic Dock here, actually six of them in Colorado. So we do use them regularly, I would say. And it's working out, okay, some interoperability issues with e-golf. I have a 2016 electric Volkswagen e-golf that will not charge on Magic Dock. And it's actually a Volkswagen communication issue is my understanding. Mm. Uh, so if anyone from Volkswagen is watching this, fix, give me a software update for my e-golf so I can actually, because 2017 e-golfs charge fine on Magic Docks. Yeah, that's really strange. And then we have EV9, of course. Yeah, EV9 wouldn't charge on Magic Dock the other day, but it did the first time. It's so weird. So this is all, uh, maybe rate your charge needs to come back. But ultimately, uh, what we're here to showcase is plug and charge on the Electrify America network with the ID4. I want to give a little background as to a high level as to how plug and charge works. And then we will show everyone how you set it up in the app and then charge the car. So plug and charge is nothing new. Again, it's been around for the last few years, I would say, and it is a part of ISO 15118. Now there's two ways to do technically plug in charge. Well, three ways, I guess we could say, but the first common way is called auto charge and it uses a Mac address communicated throughout the initial charging process that creates a unique vehicle fingerprint, if you will, so that you can build the account associated with that fingerprint. This is how EVGO's Auto Charge Plus work, works. It's how Fastned works with their Auto Charge program. And it is good. I would say it works most of the time. I mean, it works almost all of the time when it's set up, but there are some security risks more or less that are taken with uh, this because uh, if someone's really a nerd and they are a hacker, they could technically hack a Mac ID and put it into another vehicle. Now, the likelihood of that happening is very slim. I haven't heard of many issues with it. There are security measures put in place by network operators like EVGO, but it's still not the full secure um, uh, plug-in charge, which is uh, ISO 15118 that uses PKN certificate handlers, uh, insert acronyms here that I don't remember offhand, but I've sat in all the meetings for plug and charge stuff and it's pretty complicated. Um, in order to set up plug and charge, Colton, what did you have to do? Yeah, so I believe, now this has been, I guess a couple weeks now, about two, two and a half weeks or so. No, I think it's been less than that, don't you? Didn't Volkswagen just send out the communication it's, a week ago? No, it's been a little bit that I've had it set up. I don't know, my okay. time frame may be completely off. It's been chaotic couple of weeks at the shop, but um, got an email from Electrify America saying, hey, your Volkswagen can do plug and charge, started seeing it on Twitter or X for you other folks, and, um, went into the app and we'll show all of that in it. It was a very simple installation of it. So basically when you purchase the ID4, they at the dealership go in, get your Electrify America account set up for your 30 minutes of free fast charging for three years, yada, yada. And in there you have your VIN number, shows the plan in there. So underneath the plan, you actually go in there and activate plug and charge. And that took, I believe about 24 hours or so for it to actually hit my account to where it goes through. So we were actually gonna run through the process before deactivate it and redo it like you were doing it brand right. new. But we don't wanna wait for the yeah. lag time. 
Yeah. And and essentially everyone's already who owns a 2023 ID4 probably already has their free charging plan logged in with Electrify America yeah. in the app. And so um, all you really had to do, we'll show everyone in a moment, is go to the plug and charge menu and say, add it, go into the settings, turn on plug and charge. We'll show all this here in a second. And that's all we've done up to this point. We haven't even plugged it in yet. So nope. this will be the first activation of it. I'm excited to see how this works. So Colton, we've arrived to the Electrify America charging station. Would you mind showing me in the app how you activated plug and charge in here? Yep, so go on to account in here. This is in the Electrify America correct. app then. So let's just start over here. Yeah. So let's go, there's EA, boom, load up. Nice. So we're at Target, of course, over here. Yep. Gonna click on account. Yep. And then we're gonna go into plans. Okay. So here we have, you know, the Pass Plus. That's what you use for your Tesla. Yep, exactly. And then we have the ID4 charging plan. And this gets set up at the dealership when you purchase the car. Right. So you click on this, uh, has all the info in here. So three years uh, free charging for 30 minutes. Yep. And then under here was the new tab and it shows activate when you need to do it. Okay. Just click on that and then you press enroll. And that gets- Already had your VIN in here and everything then, right? Exactly, yeah. So it was as simple as that and really nothing else I've done since then. Right, and then we noticed that in the car at least, plug and charge was already selected in the settings menu. Yeah. So in theory, this should be able to just plug in. It will do its certificate communication and we won't have to activate anything. I do just want to make the viewers aware. It does show that the credit card reader is unavailable. No surprise here with the NIAX lifestyle and it's actually in service mode right now. I'm not sure why, um, but you'd still need the app to activate. So Colton, what do you say you plug it in? We'll give a first try on plug and charge, seeing if it actually works or will, <laughs> I don't know. What do you think, Alyssa? You think it's gonna work? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, Ready? cool. Ready, go for it. We're in, we're connecting, nice. No, you know, no one's touching any apps, no one's activating anything. Let's see, this may take a minute. Okay, processing, this is good. <laughs> Authorized, plug and charge worked. No way, initiating charging, Colton. Cool. <laughs> that's freaking awesome. So that's all, you know, that's the experience you should have is, you know, basically rolling up, plugging in. I wouldn't quite walk away. <laughs> Don't pull a Tesla and then you're good to go. Interestingly, it shows uh, session fee $0, but then says 56 cents a kilowatt hour but also indicates ID4 charging plan, which shouldn't charge you anything. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, the battery is cold on this one, so no preconditioning still. And uh, yeah, I imagine it's not gonna charge very fast, but dude, high five. Wow. It's Plug and charge, baby. Nice work, Volkswagen. Only took them three years too long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And what's though. crazy is this is only for 2023 model year. So it's for the US Chattanooga cars, oh, okay. not the other ones. And actually not too bad, 100 kilowatts on a cold battery. Okay, that's pretty livable, I would say. Yeah, it's been sitting outside all day. Nice, well, we'll let it charge up. We'll give some final thoughts and that'll be that. Nice work, Volkswagen. Sweet. Before we end this video, guys, there's some cool stuff going on at the chargers. Two Q6 e-tron test vehicles and an iPace. You never see iPaces. I'll be over in Europe testing. What's over here, Alyssa? Oh, this one's under maintenance and someone's on the computer screen. What the heck? <laughs> okay. They gave them free charging. Can we? move the mouse around <laughs> okay that would be pretty funny oh no can we oh i think it is moving their mouse no, no it's not it's not okay that'd be not to be that guy but that'd be pretty funny but cool to see ipace and q6 e-trons here at the charger fun stuff they're just doing mileage accumulation their local company actually contracted by volkswagen group is my understanding to do all of the local testing testing charging infrastructure logging everything and uh, yeah, so the dogs are chilling here. Still no dog mode in Volkswagens either. Come on, especially with ID Buzz coming, we really need a dog mode happening soon. Yeah. But let's wrap up the video. I would say uh, really fun time and plug and charge worked great. So that actually was a fantastic implementation. Again, it took so long. You know, the, the EA guys and the Volkswagen guys always say, well, plug and charge is so difficult to do, but Ford did it two years ago on Volkswagen's charging network. Yeah. So. 
yeah, it's difficult. It's do it. I mean, and thankfully we are here. Still a bummer if you own a 2021 or 2022. Um, you still got to bring it in for that initial software update to 3.1 over the air still needs to be a bigger focus for these vehicles. And I think with the newer software hitting the vehicles, some newer things that is all getting improved. And I would say this is a, a notable improvement to your ownership, Colton, don't you think? Absolutely. Oh no, team viewer. What is going on here? Marum. We're in here charging. Don't shut our charging off, Maram. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're Man. a whopping 101 kilowatts right there. Yeah, but it's warming up because uh, we're just sitting flat at 100. Uh, we dipped down to 90, battery warmed up, came back up to 100. Not the end of the world, but not great. Still needs preconditioning. Yeah. So everything's happening at this charger. We had Q6 e-trons, iPace, people logging into the chargers. This one's back to working now. And um, so things are happening and we're here doing plug and charge. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you on another one again soon. Bye.